Hey guys, today we're going to be working on a LiftMaster 888LM uh, MyQ keypad. This is for a garage door. It'll allow you to open your garage door uh, remotely from an app. It'll, it has some other features too, like an auto-close feature, so you can set your garage door to auto-close after a predetermined amount of time so your door doesn't stay open. Um, it's a pretty inexpensive product. They're about 40 or 50 bucks on Amazon. Um, if you want the internet enabled, or if you want it to be internet enabled, they make a gateway. I'll give you links to all this stuff in the description. Um, and that allows you to control from the app. But by default, I don't think you can control from the app unless you buy the internet gateway. But regardless, I installed this a bunch of years ago. I think maybe 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. And there's a known issue with these things where um, they, they'll fail and they'll start beeping. Uh, they'll the lights will start flashing, will stop working, we won't be able to connect to it from the app. Or in my case, uh, you see none of those things are happening here. In my case, the garage door will just kind of open and close randomly. So I can't say for sure that this unit is faulty until I take it apart, um, but we're gonna take it apart. We're gonna look and see what components may have failed. They already have a, a good idea after doing some research online. And I'm gonna test to see if they're bad, but I'm gonna replace them regardless prophylactically because I don't wanna have to worry about this. Now, if you do some research on these things, you'll see that they have uh, what's called supercapacitors in there, and that is actually what powers this thing. So when you press the button and close the circuit uh, to actuate the opener, those, those capacitors are kind of what's responsible for powering that device. So when the device is in the state that it's in right now, the button isn't pressed, um, it can pull power from the garage door opener. But when you press that button, um, then it can't because the, the potential across those terminals is zero for a brief period of time. And regardless, I mean, the, there's a microcontroller in there. It draws power. So these capacitors kind of act like a, a mini battery. So when they go bad, um, that battery is not there and it just does weird things. So again, we're going to pull it off the wall. We're going to look at it inside. We're going to find the components that might be faulty. But again, even if they're not, I'm going to replace them prophylactically just because of the age of this unit and the known issue that it has. So let's start putting it all, pulling it off the wall. Now, if you have one of these things and you didn't install it, maybe it came with your house, so you just flip up this little cover right here, and there's a, a screw up here. And there should be another one down in this area, but you're not gonna be, there's not gonna be a screw that you can access with the unit on the wall. So once you pull this screw off, the whole unit should slide up, and then you can pull it out of the wall. Should be in the operative word. Jeez. There we go. So I got the unit off. We're just gonna remove these low voltage wires. Now, once you remove these, this light should stay on for a while. Oh, see it's flashing now. They should die off. It should take a while to die off because this device doesn't have any power right now. So the, the super capacitor that may have failed is what's powering this right now. Boy, it'll be embarrassing if I just ended up leaving the door open. These capacitors are good. But again, don't care. Going to replace them due to age. Every electrical component has a limited lifespan, just like any battery does too. And this unit was manufactured in 2015. You can see on the back there, hopefully. Okay, let's get it on the bench and take it apart. Okay, I got it on the bench. My bench is starting to get full of crap here. I'm gonna start fixing some stuff. So we're just gonna gently pry up on this insulator here. I think. Maybe it's glued on. Full disclosure, I've never done this before, but we'll figure it out together. It does kind of seem like it's glued on. Yeah, it looks like there's some tabs up here. I don't know if it's glue, it's just... Eh, it comes off, it's not glue. I don't think it is. Okay. So we got the board exposed here. Focus. There we go. And there should be just a couple of tabs that secure the board. 
So just gently work those. I think the board will then slide down. Unless now maybe we have to take out these screws entirely. <clears throat> screws hold it in place as well. So you have to take out the power screws that the wires were screwed to. There we go. Now the board is loosey-goosey. Alright, so this is the board. Let's see if we can get a close-up. Is it going to cooperate? There we go. That's not bad, right? So these are the capacitors right here, here and here. So the goal right now is just to get some readings off them. And it's gonna be difficult to see if the camera would focus. These are 2.7 volt, one farad capacitors. Some, I don't recognize that brand name, do you? We'll get some high quality ones. I don't see any evidence of failure, like sometimes you'll see bulging when a capacitor goes. I don't see that going on here. These look okay visually, and again, they might be okay, but I'm replacing them due to age. I just don't want to have to worry about it. All right, so let's go online. I'm going to order some 2.7 volt, 1 farad capacitors. You can get these on Amazon. I'm not going or to order mine from DigiKey. Um, they're a major electronic supplier. You can get good brand names there like you know, Panasonic, Nikon. Um, not Nikon. What's the other brand name? The, the, the one that sounds like Nikon. I can't remember. I'll put a link in the description. Um, or you can go with the Amazon ones. They might be the same thing. Okay, I got the capacitors ordered. Uh, again, I'll leave links in the description. I was able to get them for about less than a dollar a piece uh, through my DigiKey account. But again, if you don't have a DigiKey account, uh, you can get them on Amazon for a couple bucks. They shouldn't be very expensive. So we'll wait for those to arrive. In the meantime, we'll put this back together because again, it is functional. Um, I think the parts will probably be here in a couple days. So let's snap the board back in. Nice and positively retained. They did a nice job with that, even without the screws. Okay. Let's put this protective cover back on. Beautiful. All right. Put it back on the wall. See now. Yours is still working. Hopefully I just saved you a step and you don't have to take yours apart and figure out what parts you need. There were some folks online that kind of suggested what the parts were, but I didn't know if maybe there were different revisions of this board or whatnot. I didn't want to take a chance, order the wrong stuff and embarrass myself. But it does seem to be indeed what others are saying. So put red back on red, white back on white. This thing should start making noise in a minute. Gotta wait for those capacitors to charge up. <clears throat> now there will be some soldering involved in this if you don't have an electronic solder soldering kit, recommend you get one. The big old Weller soldering gun that everybody seems to have. It might work, but that's going to be tough to do. Don't worry, the electronic soldering guns, you know, just a basic one. They're not that expensive. All right, we'll pick this up once the parts arrive. I have, uh, well, the new capacitors arrived for the garage door opener. Again, I ordered a bag of 10. I have the printed circuit board out of the opener. I just wanted to look at it under the digital microscope just to see how it ticks. So just panning around, I see uh, an SI-1000 right there, which is, uh, looking it up online, it's a Silicon Labs ultra low power uh, microcontroller. Uh, it runs on an Intel 8051 core. 
Uh, and it has uh, a built-in radio transceiver, and you can actually see the radio transceiver all along the perimeter. You can see that big fat trace right there where it does a little squiggly. It goes around the entire board. Let's, let's zoom out a little bit, actually. Sorry, this is a, a cheapy microscope. It's not autofocus or anything fancy. <clears throat> Super cool, though. It'd be great for kids and science experiments and things like that. So there's not much to this thing. I mean, this, this 8051 core is designed by Intel, I think, in the 1980s. So it's definitely not new technology. <clears throat> it's got, one of the cool features about it is it has really low sleep current. I'm just looking at the data sheet online. It looks like the sleep current is less than one microamp, which is uh, really, really low. It kind of explains why it's able to run on two, uh, two super caps down here. So these are the capacitors we're going to be replacing. <clears throat> Notice the polarity too. So they have a band down one side. You're just going to make sure that you take note of the polarity and you install the new ones the same way. <clears throat> Sorry, I know you guys were a little bit out of focus. There we go. So yeah, there's a, a band down this side of the capacitor here and on the other side. So let's get so, uh, set up to remove these capacitors. Okay, I got the board flipped over. I'm going to start with that solder joint right there. It's the first time I've soldered on camera, so or desoldered. So don't judge. Or if you can, just be, if you do, just be kind. I have a, a Weller soldering station here, but anything that you have with a small enough tip should work just fine. I'll leave a link in the description for some other less expensive soldering irons. This is a pretty expensive station. Heat up. It always take longer when you're waiting, right? The date's wrong on this thing. Come on, get hot. <sighs> Might be time for a new tip. more heat. There we go. Solder just melted. I'm going to get my solder sucker. And suck out the solder. So you see how there's that removed most of the solder compared that one to this one. I probably have to hit it again. But I'm going to do that to all four pins just like that. I'm not going to bore you guys with each one. This is what a solder sucker looks like. I'll leave a link to this in the description too. You may also need to hit the other side too. So this one, this one's pretty clear here, but this one needs some more love. So hit it with the soldering iron from this side. right now. Get the solder sucker. This one's tough. Solder doesn't want to give up. The solder sucker has also seen better days. And sometimes what you can do is you can just wrestle with them a little bit while the solder is a liquid. Here's a really good view of what's going on. You can actually see light through that joint right there. So that one we know is pretty clear. This one we still got some goobers on. It's gonna be really tough to do so you guys can see it happen, but I'm gonna try.
I'm gonna try to keep this on camera. Get this hot, keep it in focus, and get this capacitor out all at once. I imagine how a surgeon must feel, right? Uh oh, camera's going off. Take 12. Sometimes you gotta clean the tip of your soldering iron off in flux too. I just dipped it in there. This one probably needs to be retinned. And we need some more heat. When in doubt, get it hotter, right? Man, this one's being a bear. Solder doesn't want to let go. You know what, I think we'll cut it off. And then we'll just take the, the leads off. So I'm gonna get my snips here. Snip. Snip, there we go. Now we just gotta clear those holes out. <clears throat> Hopefully that'll be easier without the capacitor right there though. Let's keep in mind that capacitor acts as a huge heat sink too. Man, this thing is relentless. Those things are on there. Get you back into focus. I got the soldering iron pretty high. I don't want to go much higher than this. It's like 660 degrees. Start burning stuff. right there we go one See, sometimes things don't always go smoothly you know fight with this off camera. It's a bit of a bear, but I kind of finally got it out. You can see that last pin that was eluding me. Now we got to move on to the other capacitor. Same procedure. Oh, 
this one I'm trying a different technique. I'm heating the leads in an alternating pattern, just kind of walking the capacitor out. So I'll heat the solder on one side, lift the capacitor when it melts. I'll go to the other side and do exactly the same thing. Got to be careful you don't lift a trace in the board doing this. See that? And then you can use a solder sucker probably with a lot more success. Just watch it because the capacitors can get hot. Now we're just going to suck the solder out of those two pads right there. Got it. This one. Got it. All right, both capacitors are out and the pads are clear. So just to recap, we got a capacitor there and another similar capacitor right there on the edge of the board. Time to put the new ones in. Okay, I got the first new one in position. Again, make sure your band is facing the right way. These are polarized. So, I'm just gonna solder those pins in. I have some electronic solder. So we're doing this on camera. shouldn't have drank so much coffee today. But you guys can see that. Okay, I'm going to flip the board over and just make sure the back side is nicely hit. Take a look at the leads coming out. We'll focus. It actually looks pretty good. As good, if not better, than the original ones. I think we'll leave that. Let's get our next capacitor. Let's get our next capacitor. Where are they? Where are they? The bag. Come on, guys. You're supposed to keep an eye on it. Here it is. Capacitor number two. Give me one second. Okay, let's get the second capacitor. Same deal as the first one. Let me just go clean that up with some 99% uh, alcohol. Sorry guys, I realized the mic fell off my shirt. You probably didn't hear anything I just said. My sincerest apologies. So hopefully you at least saw what I did. Now I'm going to go clean this up with some 99% alcohol uh, just to get the flux off the board. Just in time for the microscope to turn off. Okay, that's what things look like after cleaning with 99% alcohol. You can see they're not much worse than factory joints. Let's flip it over. We'll have to snip off these leads here. Get you in focus. There we go. That's how it's done. 
Just wanted to point something else out while you're doing this project. So if you get the same capacitor as I ordered, know that band has a minus sign on there, right? So does that one. And notice that the board has a plus side. So that's kind of how you tell where the band goes. So the band is going to go opposite where you see the pluses. Okay, time to snip these leads, reinstall them, see if it still works. I guess we could test the old capacitors too. See if they really are bad. I don't think they are, but just didn't want to chance it. Let's do it this way. So we'll snip that one. Whoops. That one. They're going everywhere in the room. That one. And that one. Okay. Let's test the old ones just for giggles. Okay. I got my Fluke uh, 289 set up to measure capacitance. Now you don't have to use a Fluke 289. This is a really expensive meter. You know, $30 meter will probably work just fine. Let's see what we're at. What? Do I have it backwards? Maybe? Yeah, maybe I do. Not discharge capacitor. What? Is this thing too strong for it to test? Okay. Maybe we can't test them. Let me try the other one. I suppose I could have looked up what the what the ratings are on the fluke. I just dropped it, of course. Oh boy. Try the other one. Cannot discharge it. Okay, so let me try shorting it out with a screwdriver or something else. Okay, I'll just short it out with some cutters that should discharge it. But maybe this capacitor is just too strong. Okay, so maybe I'll, I lied. A $30 meter probably won't be able to test these because my $500 meter won't be able to test these. Oh well. Okay, I just checked online and unfortunately the Fluke 289 won't be able to measure these capacitors. It's just out of range. So let's reinstall the board. Okay, let's put the board back in the board receptacle. Just like we did last time. Easy peasy. Oh man, sorry guys, I got the sniffles. No, I don't think it's COVID. Settle down. Where is it? Okay, let's go bolt it back up. Let's see if it lets the smoke out. I got the red wire hooked up. Now I got the white wire hooking up. I see some signs of life. Give that a minute. Let those charge up. Now you want this to, these lights are going to blink and they're going to keep on doing that until you hear a beep. I believe the beep means the system is ready, it's learned, the capacitors are charged. Usually doesn't take all that long. Wait for it. Wait for it. Maybe. Maybe not. Is it broken? Did I break it? Boy, that'd be really embarrassing if I showed you guys a video how to fix this thing. I ended up breaking it. it wasn't even broken.
What's that old adage? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. <clears throat> and literally three seconds after I hit the, the pause button on the camera, uh, it's ready. Let's test it out. We'll open the door and then close it. I hear a door opening. It's getting brighter in here. Door is open. Door is closed. All right, guys, I think that's a wrap. As you can see, this is not a very difficult repair. By far the most difficult piece was just uh, removing those old caps. Sometimes uh, the solder can fight with you. Uh, but hopefully we bought some, bought a new lease on life for this thing, because this is a, what, a $40, $50 keypad. Uh, and these capacitors were less than a dollar a piece. So if your keypad's in otherwise good shape, this is a great repair if it's starting to misbehave for you. I'll leave links to the keypad, to the capacitors, to a, you know, kind of a basic soldering iron and a solder sucker in the description, as well as maybe some other tools if you have absolutely no soldering tools. So anyway, hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe, stay safe, and thanks for watching.